Back of the leg, introduction. The back or posterior compartment of the leg is also called the calf, corresponds to the front of forearm. This is the bulkiest of the three compartments of leg, because of the powerful anti-gravity superficial muscles, e.g. gastrocnemius and soleus, and are quite large in size. They raise the heel during walking. These muscles are inserted into the heel. The deeper muscles cross the ankle medially to enter the sole. Corresponding to the two bones of the leg, there are two arteries, the posterior tibial and peroneal, but there is only one nerve, the tibial, which represents both the median and ulnar nerves O1 the forearm. Superficial fascia dissection. The horizontal incision, 6, in the skin is already given. Carry this incision along the lateral and medial borders of the leg. Reflect whole skin of the back of leg distally till the heel, 9. Identify the structures, e.g. great and small saphenous veins, medial and lateral calcanean arteries, and nerves in the superficial fascia. The superficial fascia of the back of the leg contains, the small and great saphenous veins and their tributaries, several cutaneous nerves, and the medial and lateral calcanean arteries. Small or short saphenous vein. The vein is formed on the dorsum of the foot by the union of the lateral end of the dorsal venous arch with the lateral marginal vein. It enters the back of the leg by passing behind the lateral malleolus. In the leg, it ascends lateral to the tendocal canius, and then along the middle line of the calf, to the lower part of the popliteal fossa. Here it pierces the deep fascia and opens into the popliteal vein. It drains the lateral border of the foot, the heel, and the back of the leg. It is connected with the great saphenous and with the deep veins, and is accompanied by the sural nerve. Great or long saphenous vein, this vein begins on the dorsum of the foot by union of the medial end of the dorsal venous arch with the medial marginal vein. It ascends in front of the medial malleolus. In the lower one-third of the leg, it passes obliquely across the medial surface of the tibia. In the upper two-thirds of the leg, the vein ascends along the medial border of the tibia, to the posteromedial side of the knee. It is accompanied by the saphenous nerve. In the thigh it inclines forwards to reach saphenous opening and drains into femoral vein. Cutaneous nerves, the skin of the calf can be divided into three vertical areas, medial, central and lateral. Roughly there are two nerves for each area, with an additional nerve for the heel. The medial area is supplied by the saphenous nerve and by the posterior branch of the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh, the central area by the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh and by the sural nerve, the lateral area by the lateral cutaneous nerve O1 the calf and the peroneal communicating nerve. The lower part of the lateral area is supplied by the sural nerve. The heel is supplied by the medial calcaneal branches of the tibial nerve. 1 the saphenous nerve, L3, L4, is a branch of the posterior division of the femoral nerve. It arises in the femoral triangle. It pierces the deep fascia on the medial side of the knee between the sartorius and the gracilis, and descends close to the great saphenous vein. It supplies the skin of most of the medial area of the leg, and the medial border of the foot up to the ball of the big toe. During vena section this nerve should not be injured. The posterior division of the medial calaneus nerve of the thigh, L2, L3, supplies the skin of the uppermost part of the medial area of the calf. 3. The posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh, S1, S2, S3, is a branch of the sacral plexus and descends along with the small saphenous vein, to supply the skin of the upper half of the central area of the calf. 4. The sural nerve, L5, S1, S2, is a branch of the tibial nerve in the popliteal fossa. It descends between the two heads of the gastrocnemius. It accompanies the small saphenous vein. It is joined by the peroneal commutating nerve about 5 cm above the heel. After passing behind the lateral malleolus, the nerve runs forwards along the lateral border of the foot, and ends at the lateral side of the little toe. It supplies the skin shown in. For the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf, L4, L5, S1, is a branch of the common peroneal nerve in the popliteal fossa. It supplies the skin of the upper two-thirds of the lateral area of the leg, both in front and behind. 
the peroneal or sural communicating nerve, L5, S1, S2, is a branch of the common peroneal nerve. It descends to join the sural nerve about 5 cm above the heel. Before joining the latter it supplies the skin of the lateral area of calf. The medial calcanean branches, S1, S2, of the tibial nerve perforate the flexor retinaculum and supply the skin of the heel and the medial side of the sole of the foot. Sural nerve has a tendency to form painful neuroma. Sural nerve can be grafted, as it is only sensory, superficial, and is easily identified lying between tendon of tendocal canius and lateral malleolus. Dissection, incise the deep fascia vertically and reflect it. Define the flexor retinaculum postero inferior to the medial malleolus and identify the tendons enclosed in synovial sheaths passing deep to it. Identify the medial and lateral bellies of gastrocnemius muscle. Cut the medial belly 5 cm distal to the origin. Reflect it laterally to locate the popliteal vessels and tibial nerve. Identify plantaris muscle with its longest tendon situated posteromedial to lateral head to gastrocnemius. Reflect the lateral head of gastrocnemius 5 cm distal to its origin. Both the bellies now can be turned distally. Deep to gastrocnemius, expose the strong soleus muscle. The popliteal vessels and tibial nerve pass deep or anterior to the fibrous arch between the upper parts of the two leg bones. Boundaries and subdivisions, the posterior compartment of leg is bounded and subdivided by the deep fascia. It is thin above but thick near the ankle, where it forms the flexor and superior peroneal retinacula. The boundaries of the posterior compartment of the leg are as follows. Anterior ly posterior surfaces of, 1 tibula. 2 the interosseous membrane, 3 the fibula, 4 the posterior intermuscular septum, posterior ly, deep fascia of the leg. The posterior compartment is subdivided into three parts superficial, middle, and deep, by two strong facial septa. A the superficial telus versus fuchsial septum, separates the superficial and deep muscles of the back of the leg and encloses B the posterior tibial vessels and tibial nerve. It is attached, above, to the soleal line of the tibia and the back of the fibula, below the origin of the soleus. Below, it becomes continuous with the flexor and superior peroneal retinacula. Medially, it is attached to the medial border of the tibia. Delaterally to the posterior border of the fibula the deep transverse facial septum separates the tibialis posterior from the long flexors of the toes. Attachments, above, it blends with the interosseous membrane. Below, it blends with the superficial facial septum. Medially, it is attached to the vertical ridge on the posterior surface of the tibia. Laterally, to the medial crest of the fibula. Flexor retinaculum. Some important facts about the retinaculum are as follows. 1. Attachments, the flexor retinaculum is attached anteriorly to the posterior border and tip of the medial malleolus and posteriorly and laterally to the medial tubercle of the calcaneum. Septa pass from the retinaculum to the underlying bone and divide the space deep to the retinaculum into four compartments. 2. Structures passing deep to the retinaculum, these are from medial to lateral side. The tendon of the tibialis posterior. The tendon of the flexor digit orum longus. The posterior tibial artery and its terminal branches, along with the accompanying veins. The tibial nerve and its terminal branches. The tendon of the flexor hallucis longus. Each tendon occupies a separate compartment which is lined by a synovial sheath. The nerve and artery share a common compartment. These structures, A, 2, E, lie in a tarsal tunnel. If the nerve gets pressed, it leads to tarsal tunnel syndrome. 3. The lower part of the deep surface of the flexor retinaculum gives origin to the greater part of the abductor hallucis muscle. 4. Near the calcaneum, the retinaculum is pierced by the medial calcanean vessels and nerves. Clinical anatomy tibial nerve can be injured at, in upper part of calf from fracture of tibia. In middle of calf from tight plasters. Under flexor retinaculum. This is called Tarsen J. Elbain slash syndrome. Sensory loss, distal and middle phalanges including nail beds of all toes. 
The sensory loss is in the skin over sole of foot. Motor loss if injured at upper part of calf, superficial muscles of calf. Deep muscles of calf. Intrinsic muscles of sole. Superficial muscles. The muscles of the back of leg are classified into two groups superficial and deep. The superficial muscles are the gastrocnemius, the soleus, and the plantaris. The attachments of these muscles are described in tables 9.1 and 9.2. Additional points of interest. 1. The large size of the gastrozoleus is a human character, and is directly related to the adoption of an erect posture, and to the bipedal gait of man. Soleus is homologous with flexor digit orum superficialis of the front of forearm. From an evolutionary point of view, the long plantar ligament is the divorced tendon of the gastrocnemius, and the flexor digit orum brevis is the divorced distal part of the soleus. 2. A small sesamoid bone called the favela is present in the tendon of origin of the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. 3. A bursa brodis bursa lies deep to the medial head of the gastrocnemius. The bursa is also deep to the semimembranosus and may communicate with the cavity of the knee joint. 4. The muscles of the calf play an important role in circulation. Contractions of these muscles help in the venous return from the lower limb. The soleus is particularly important in this respect. There are large, valveless, venous sinuses in its substance. When the muscle contracts the blood in these sinuses is pumped out. When it relaxes, it sucks the blood from the superficial veins through the perforators. The soleus is, therefore, called the peripheral heart. The tendocal canius is the thickest and strongest tendon of the body. It is about 15 centimeters long. It begins near the middle of the leg, but its anterior surface receives fleshy fibers of the soleus almost up to its lower end. It is narrow and thick in the middle, and expanded at both end and is attached to posterior surface of calcaneum. Tendocal canius is also known as tendo Achilles. According to a Greek legend, Achilles was an irresistible and invincible warrior. His mother, the sea goddess, had dipped him in the underground river, Styx. No weapon could harm the body which had been covered by the waters of Styx. But the warrior was ultimately killed in the War of Trojans, by the arrows hitting his vulnerable heel which was the only unprotected part of his body. His mother had held him by one heel, and the water over this heel had not flowed. Deep muscles, arteries, and nerve. Dissection. Once the soleus has been studied, separate it from its attachment on tibia and reflect it laterally. Look for a number of deep veins which emerge from this muscle. Identify popliteus, situated above the soleus muscle. Deep to soleus is the first intermuscular septum. Incise this septum vertically to reach the long flexors of the toes, e.g. flexor hallucis longus laterally and flexor digit orum longus medially. Trace these tendons till the flexor retinaculum. Turn the flexor hallucis longus laterally and expose the second intermuscular septum. Divide this septum to reveal the deepest muscle of the posterior compartment of leg, e.g. tibialis posterior. Trace its tendon also till flexor retinaculum. Study these deep muscles. Clean the lowest part of popliteal vessels and trace its two terminal branches, anterior tibial into anterior compartment and posterior tibial into the posterior compartment of leg. Identify posterior tibial vessels and tibial nerve in fibrofatty tissue between the two long flexors of the leg deep to the first intermuscular septum. Peroneal vessels are identified in the connective tissue of the second intermuscular septum. Study their origin, course, and branches from the following text. The nerve to popliteus deserves special mention. Being a branch of tibial nerve it descends over the popliteus to reach its distal border. There it supplies the muscle after winding around its distal border. It also supplies a branch to tibialis posterior muscle, both tibiofibular joints and interosseous membrane. Deep muscles, the deep muscles of the back of the leg are the popliteus, the flexor digit orum longus, the flexor hallucis longus, and the tibialis posterior. They are described in tables 9.3 and 9.4. Important relations of flexor digit orum longus. 1. The tendon crosses the tibialis posterior in lower part of the leg. 
it passes deep to the flexor retinaculum to enter the sole of foot. Here it crosses the tendon of flexor hallucis longus. 2. The tendon receives the insertion of the flexor digit orum accessorius. 3. The slips for the digits give origin to the four lumbrical muscles. Important relations of flexor hallucis longus. The tendon runs across the lower part of the posterior surface of the tibia. Reaching the calcaneus it turns forwards below the sustentaculum tali which serves as a pulley for it. As the tendon lies on the medial side of calcaneum, it runs deep to the flexor retinaculum and is surrounded by a synovial sheath. The tendon then runs forwards in the sole when it is crossed by the tendon of flexor digit orum longus. Important relations of tibialis posterior. The tendon passes behind the medial malleolus, grooving it. The tendon then passes deep to the flexor retinaculum. The terminal part of the tendon supports the spring ligament. The deep muscles are tested by palpating the calf while the foot is being plantar flexed. Tendo Achilles reflex or ankle jerk, S1, S2 The foot gets plantar flexed on tapping the tendocal caneus. For thromboangiitis obliterans or occlusive disease of lower limb arteries, sympathetic fibers to the arteries are removed, so as to denervate the arteries. Lumbar 2 and 3 ganglia with intervening sympathetic trunk is removed, as these supply the arteries of lower limb. In long-distance air travel, sitting immobile can lead to thrombosis of soleal venous sinuses. The thrombus may get dislodged to block any other artery. One must stretch the legs frequently. Dislocation or subluxation of ankle is common during plantar flexion. Lower end of the leg bones, i.e. medial malleolus, tibia, thin fibula and lateral malleolus form tibia fibular mortis. This is wider anteriorly and narrow posteriorly. The trochlear surface of talus forming ankle joint is also wider anteriorly and narrow posteriorly. During dorsiflexion, wider trochlear surface fits into narrow posterior part of the mortise. The joint is stable and close packed. During plantar flexion the narrow posterior trochlear surface lies loosely in wider anterior part of the mortise. The joint is unstable and can easily get subluxated or dislocated. This occurs while walking in high heels. Posterior tibial artery, beginning, course and termination, it begins at the lower border of the popliteus, between the tibia and the fibula, deep to the gastrocnemius. It enters the back of the leg by passing deep to tendinous arch of soleus. In the leg, it runs downwards and slightly medially, to reach the posteromedial side of the aricle, midway between the medial malleolus and the medial tubercle of the calcaneum. It terminates deep to flexor retinaculum, and the origin of the abductor hallucis, by dividing, into the lateral and medial plantar arteries. Relations, one in the upper two-thirds of the leg, it lies deep to the gastrocnemius, the soleus, and the superficial transverse facial septum. Two in the lower one-third of the leg, it runs parallel to, and 2.5 cm in front of, the medial border of the tendocal caneus. It is covered by skin and fasciae. 3. At the ankle, it lies deep to the flexor retinaculum and the abductor hallucis. Deep, 1. In the upper two-thirds of the leg, it lies on the tibialis posterior. 2. In the lower one-third of the leg, it lies on the flexor digit orum longus and on the tibia. 3. At the ankle, it lies directly on the capsule of the ankle joint between the flexor digit orum longus and the flexor hallucis longus. The artery is accompanied by two vena comitans and by the tibial nerve. Branches, 1 1 The peroneal orphrey is the largest branch of the posterior tibial artery. It is described later. 2 2 Several vascular branches are given off to muscles of the back of the leg. A nutrient artery is given off to the tibia. J3 The anastomotic branches of the posterior tibial artery are as follows. A The circumflex fibular branch winds round the lateral side of the neck of the fibula to reach the front of the knee where it takes part in the anastomosis around the knee joint. B A communicating branch forms an arch with a similar branch from the peroneal artery about 5 cm above the ankle. C A malleolar branch anastomosis with other arteries over the medial malleolus. Decalcaneal branches anastomose with other arteries in the region. Eteritinal branches, 
these are the medial and lateral plantar arteries. They will be studied in the soul. Peroneal artery. Beginning, course and termination. This is the largest branch of the posterior tibial artery. It supplies the posterior and lateral compartments of the leg. It begins 2.5 cm below the lower border of the popliteus. It runs obliquely towards the fibula, and descends along the medial crest of the fibula, accompanied by the nerve to the flexor hallucis longus. It passes behind the inferior tibia fibular and ankle joints, medial to peroneal tendons. It terminates by dividing into a number of lateral calcanean branches. Branches L. Muscular branches, to the posterior and lateral compartments. 2. Nutrient artery to fibula. 3. Anastoruotic branches, the large perforating branch pierces the interosseous membrane 5 cm above the ankle, and joins the lateral malleolar network. The communicating branch anastomoses with a similar branch from the posterior tibial artery, about 5 cm above the lower end of the tibia. The calcanean branches join the lateral malleolar network. The perforating branch of the peroneal artery may reinforce, or even replace the dors alis pedis artery. Tibial nerve, course, the course and relations of the tibial nerve in the leg are similar to those of the posterior tibial artery. Like the artery, the tibial nerve also terminates by dividing into the medial plantar and lateral plantar nerves. Branches, muscular, one to the tibialis posterior, the flexor digit orum longus, the flexor hallucis longus, and the deep part of the soleus. Two medial calcanean branches pierce the flexor retinaculum, and supply the skin on the back and lower surface of the heel. Three articular, to the ankle joint. The posterior tibial pulse is palpated in doubtful cases of intermittent clotidication where a person gets cramps and severe pain in calf muscles due to lack of blood supply. The posterior tibial pulse can be felt against the calcaneum about 2 cm below and behind the medial malleolus. The long tendon of plantaris is used for tendon transplantation in the body. Tendocalcaneus can rupture in tennis players 5 cm above its insertion. Plantar flexion is not possible. The two ends must be stitched. High heels for long periods causes change in posture. Knees are excessively bent with lumbar vertebrae pushed forwards. There is a lot of stress on the muscles of back and those of the calf. So many fashionable ladies wear high heels for short time and change to flat ones soon. Mnemonics, structures under flexor retinaculum, talented doctors are never hungry to be alis posterior. Flexor digit orum longus. Posterior fibial artery. Tibial nerve. Flexor hallucis longus. Soleus acts as the peripheral heart, as it pushes the venous blood upwards. Soleus acts like first gear while gastrocnemius act like second and third gears during walking. Tendocalcaneus is the strongest tendon in the body. All the muscles of back of leg slash calf are supplied by the tibial nerve. Posterior tibial artery is palpated between medial malleolus and calcaneus under the flexor retinaculum. Posterior tibial artery ends by dividing into medial and lateral plantar arteries.